It's the 7th of September, 1939, just outside of the town of Wisna in Poland. Captain Vladislav Raginis patrols the defensive emplacements under his command. Two collections of bunkers and trenches, six kilometers apart, lining the bank of the Narev River from Gora Strenkova to Wizna. Suddenly, an explosion shakes the earth. Soldiers in the trenches are rushing for the bunkers as the air fills with fire and shrapnel. Aircraft then roar overhead, dropping bombs. One of the men rushes for the phone and gives the message they've all been dreading. The dry brush is set alight and fires spread across the trenches. In both positions, the air becomes foul with smoke and dust. The bombardment keeps up for half an hour until abruptly it stops. The battlefield switching from deafening explosions to the most disturbing silence. The men at Vizna lay low, not daring to expose an inch of their bodies. Outside, something else breaks the quiet. The Panzer II and many other legendary tanks are featured in World of Tanks, the sponsor of today's video. World of Tanks is a free-to-play online game with over 100 million players worldwide, and it's available on PC. The game has more than 800 tanks and over 40 arenas. Rush in with guns blazing. Historical accuracy means you get to control authentic models with vehicle characteristics that make you feel like a historical tank commander. Yarnold loves playing World of Tanks and likes to pretend he's a big kitty. No prizes for guessing his favorite tank. He's still hoping for the call to get his own camo. Support the channel by downloading World of Tanks using the first link in the description. If you're a new player, use the invite code COMBAT to get seven days of premium access, 250,000 credits, the premium tank commander Cromwell B, and three rental tanks for 10 battles each. If you're a returning player but haven't played them more than 30 days, you will get the following rewards. Please click the link and start playing the great game today. At the front, the men brace for what is to come. Chwila. Moment. Teraz! In the blink of an eye, the bridge is destroyed into a million pieces. Rubble and vehicles fall and slam into the earth and water. On the opposite bank, the Germans are thrown into disarray. Many flee, expecting the bunkers to come alive, while some open fire into the fortifications at random. The Poles sit still as bullets and shells slam into their bunkers, trusting them with their lives. The fire soon stops, the Germans seemingly not knowing what to do. Peeking back out, the men see the German infantry is all gone, but the tanks still remain. Then, a small group of men on foot appear from the buildings. The Polish lookout frowns. Jerzy, czy to oficerowie? No, nie wiem. Ci goście wyglądają poważnie. The idea of shooting is tantalizing. He reaches out to his bunker's machine gun and swings it towards the enemy as he molds the idea of opening fire. But he doesn't get to choose. The pole has no time to think it over, and he pulls the trigger. The machine gun is unleashed, cutting through the men in a matter of seconds. The gunshot of the massive rifles washes across the battlefield, and the huge bullet slams into the enemy armor. They fire again and again with some shots bouncing and some punching through. The tankers are thrown into disarray as the transmission of their injured brothers makes them keenly aware of the danger they're in. 
they fire back with their cannons, aiming at bunkers at random as they retreat under fire, escaping the Polish ambush. Back at Gora Strenkova, Raginis listens to the men's updates. He's impressed at their early success, but with such an overwhelming force against them, he knows it won't last. Outside his bunker, the sounds of bullets and bombs continue to rage. It's a sleepless night. The sun rises to a foggy morning. The visibility across the river is next to nothing, but the Poles can hear there's something afoot. Proszę pana, czołgi są w ruchu. Przekraczają rzekę. Proszę pana. Przygotować karabiny przeciw pancerne. They hear the splashes, the revving engines, the moving water. Tanks are wading through. Panzers appear like specters through the fog, and the Polish line immediately opens fire. The Panzers push through, firing their cannons as behind them emerge multiple boats of infantry. The machine gunners focus on them and scores of Germans fall to their fire. But the Panzers fight back, firing high explosive shells at the Polish positions and claiming casualties. The anti-tank rifles try to bring them down, but there's too many of them. Moments later, shells begin raining down on the enemy line. Explosions rip through the formation, sending the German infantry scrambling for cover which doesn't exist, while the tanks are shaken and disoriented by the incessant detonations. A few are brutally taken out of action with a direct impact, while the rest struggle to fight under the heavy bombardment. The anti-tank riflemen continue firing through it all, damaging more enemy tanks. The bunkers continue to fire at the exposed Germans as the entire battle becomes a duel of artillery. But only one side has bunkers. The German position is completely untenable. Tanks and men are just trying to survive through the storm of shells. Meanwhile, an officer gets on the phone to update Raginis. Unexpectedly, the next salvo of enemy shells punches into the ground without detonating and starts emitting plumes of white smoke, blinding the entire battlefield as high explosives continue to rain. The Poles keep guard through it all, fearing the Germans are about to push under the smoke screen, but they don't. Instead, the battered German attack force retreats across the river, but it's hardly a victory. <laughs> And so, with the cover of the night, the brave defenders prepare to escape. With all their losses, only 11 beaten survivors remain. They make their way out under the cover of darkness. Like and subscribe. Meanwhile, Captain Reginis takes a deep breath. Now it's their turn to fight. He phones Captain Schmidt, commander of the second bunker, in the nearby village of Kropiki. Schmidt, straciliśmy linię frontu. Potrzebujemy zwiadowcy, który poinformuje nas o natarciu wroga. Zrobisz to? Od razu! Schmidt gathers a small crew, and together they venture out into the unknown, taking the same dry swamp as the survivors. They make their way back to the forward positions. When they get there, they're met with a scene of utter devastation. But still they push on. Finding a view down into the river, Schmidt takes a closer look. Some tanks and infantry have made it across, but most are still on the opposite side. A pontoon bridge is being constructed with men and tanks gathering to use it. Kapitanie, mamy otworzyć ogień? Nie, to nie jest nasza misja. Najważniejszą rzeczą jest dostarczenie raportu dowódcy. The group managed to get back to their bunker, and Schmidt shares what he saw with Raginis, including the scout unit. Ostrzelać teren i przygotować się do bitwy. Tak, kapitanie. The Poles double and triple check their weapons, determined to make the enemy pay. Time drags on. The explosion of Polish artillery echoes. Then the enemy aircraft return. Men stuck outside die for cover as bombs rock the earth around them. 
the relentless bombing resuming in anger. Eventually, it subsides, and Raginis knows that can only mean one thing. The Germans fire at the defensive positions, advancing from cover to cover through the trees and grass. The Poles return fire from the bunkers and trenches, cutting down Germans left and right, but they have the numbers. They reach one of the trenches and drop in, taking cover from the bunkers as they fight off the Polish soldiers. The enemy approaching the first bunker of three. Verdammt! Wir können nicht weiterkommen! Wir warten auf die Hauptkräfte! Hours of stalemate pass until a rumble is heard in the distance. Dread fills the poles as the source crests over the terrain. It's 60 Panzers from the 10th Panzer Division. They unleash their guns and the shells slam into the first bunker while the Poles open fire with all they have. Small arms do little and the few anti-tank rifles can't handle the sheer amount of vehicles as shell after shell slams into the fortified emplacements. The men in the first bunker receive the brunt of the enemy attack with panzer shells pummeling the bunkers as men fight for their lives. Across the main road in the opposite town, Captain Schmidt is facing the same impossible odds. Gunfire rains down from everywhere and tank shells slam into the heavy concrete. More and more shells slam into the first bunker until finally, a shell strikes right through the bunker. In the blink of an eye, the first bunker falls to complete silence. Within moments, the German infantry breaks down the door and pushes in, taking it over. The assault carries on with all eyes falling on Reginus's bunker. But Schmidt isn't done yet. The Germans hear a war cry and men charge out of the destroyed bunker. Schmidt at the very front. The Germans try to flee, some continuing to fire as the mad poles run through the hail of bullets. Schmidt's men furiously attack the enemies. The Germans try to fight back, but the cohesion of their line has been lost and the poles cut them down with efficiency, wiping out the squad. Schmidt can barely believe that worked. They run back to the safety of the bunker and make it almost completely unscathed. But it doesn't last for long. The bombardment resumes and the Polish lines outside break down, destroyed by the overwhelming fire. Schmidt's bunker is surrounded. Schmidt opens fire with his rifle, joining one of the remaining machine gunners in the defense. German after German falls. A panzer takes notice. The tank takes aim. The shell explodes, wrecking the machine gun and firing shrapnel across the room. Schmidt, the machine gunner, and three other men are hit. Germans completely surround the complex, banging on the doors. Schmidt realizes he has no other option and surrenders. Raginus's bunker is the last one standing, outnumbered and hopelessly outgunned. The Germans surround the position and attempt to fight their way inside. But the Poles repeatedly fight them off at the doors. The German fire also slows. The whole evening and night is spent in this one-sided stalemate. Keep auf. Deine Lage ist hoffnungslos. No reply comes. Inside, the Poles greet them with a wall of lead. The bunker doors are becoming unpassable choke points held by the power of a machine gun. This is repeated multiple times. The Poles determined to inflict as much damage as they can, but they're on their last bullets. Raginus still doesn't want to, but he can't know if his men feel the same. They've already done their duty and more. They made the enemy pay dearly. Would they proudly fight to their last breath with him, or will they curse the commander who condemned them to death in the name of pride? Raginus takes a deep breath and steps up before his men. Żołnierze, 
Dziękuję wam za wszystko. Służyliście naszemu narodowi z honorem. Czas złożyć broń. He opens the door. A line of Germans stand outside, but don't open fire. Reginus holds the door open as his men walk out one by one, sharing a look of utmost respect. The Germans throw them to the ground, but Reginus doesn't look. The last man exits, leaving Reginus on his own, and he closes the door. Moments later, the men hear a grenade go off inside.